Morning everybody, it's Bart at High Tech Motorsport Elk River, Minnesota. And we're launching right now a how-to video. We've got a lot of requests for camshafts on LS1, so we're gonna do LS1, uh, LS2, LS3, L92 camshafts. Uh, I wanna tell you why things work and why they don't. This is a video that's for people that wanna get the correct camshaft for their application, not for people that just want a bunch of noise and the stuff doesn't work. So stick with me a little bit. I'll give you all what I use all the way through with these um, recommendations and why things work and why they don't. But it's going to be a little longer than, than my editor wants to do, so there you go. Okay, so the LS1, whenever you're picking a camshaft out, the goal is first to look at what you're doing with the application. Do you have a truck? Do you have to pull a skid loader? Is it a car that's a Firebird Camaro Corvette that's going to be used for pleasure and kind of high speed off on the track type stuff, or is it a pure race car? Everything makes a difference because the camshaft design will change the characteristics of the car or truck and the way it works. Okay, simplicity. If you've got a truck, um, 5.3. So they came in 4.8, 5.3s, 5.7s, 6.0s, and 6.2s, um, <clears throat> just bigger cubic inches. The goal here is to maximize horsepower and torque and efficiency for your application. So don't get carried away when you end up putting a big camshaft in and then it doesn't work. Um, one thing I'm gonna talk about is the cylinder head flow numbers. And in a camshaft design, you've got lift, okay? You've got duration, and you've got overlap and center line. But we're gonna skip, skip center line here to the very end. We've got overlap. Uh, there's three basic main things. The easiest one there is the lift. Everybody makes such a big deal about lift. That's the least important. When you're looking at a cylinder head, for example, the LS1 cylinder head, I always write down the flow numbers. And I've got my cheat sheet here. We're going to put it up on the on the graph. Oops. What does that remind you of? We're going to put the graph numbers up. These are my cylinder heads I work with all the time because I can't remember everything. I've got the flow numbers and the percentage of flow from intake to exhaust. All right? That's very important with, with camshafts and how much duration and... Um, what you want to put for the different lobes as far as, is it a 224 lobe on the intake and 230 on the back? It depends what the actual percentage of flow is between the two. Okay, so these will be on the bottom of the screen. The LS1 camshaft at 600 lift, kind of flat lines, maybe goes up one or two CFM, but at 600 it's 230 CFM, 193 on the exhaust. Those are numbers I've measured over time and I've verified it with a bunch of other tuners across the country. So. When you're looking at any configuration of what you're doing, you can take the CFM on the intake times two, okay? That's 460, plus 10%, that puts you like 505, 510, whatever that is. That is the maximum amount of horsepower that that cylinder head can make, no matter what the cubic inches are in any application. So for example, if you've got a 5.7 car, if you put a camshaft, let's say uh, 226, 232 in it, which is one of the ones I use for, for Firebird Camaro, no matter what you do, you're only gonna be able to make that much horsepower. No matter how hard you spin it, and there you can, you know, guys be like, oh yeah, I made an extra eight horsepower. Still don't care. But when you get, when you try to put a bigger camshaft in than what maximizes the amount of cubic inches and the amount of cylinder head, all you do is end up with a soggy camshaft that runs crappy down low it's poor fuel economy and doesn't work very well. All right, continuing on with this stuff. So the lift is easy, 600, 600, 600. I did all kinds of work with cranking up the lift, down lift, taking the exhaust and knocking it down, trying to get better flow on the exhaust side over time. Didn't make a whole lot of difference and it's in simplicity's sake. What you wanna do is you wanna go to the maximum or close to the maximum flow number for the intake side and the exhaust side and just put the lift up there. Don't get carried away. So an LS cam is gonna be a 600, 610 lift, whatever it might be. And the reason that you're trying to do that is we know that it continues to flow up a little bit higher, but the springs become kind of unstable. And um, we're just gonna go from there. Now, one thing I want you to see is the difference between the lobes, because um, that's really important too. We're gonna to put this book up on the on line at least some of the stuff for LS. This is the Cobb Cams Engine Builder book that has the lobes in it. The most important part here is not the duration, but actually what the flow uh, duration is at 200 lift, which is when the 
the valve is off 200 thousandths. So we're going to put those up so you can see the difference in these different cam lobes. That's not something you're going to see in most places because don't give these books out to everybody because it's confusing. All right, so you're already at 600 lift. Now, camshafts, the bigger the cubic inch, the more cam you can get away with to feed it. Um, and they run better. So if you put the same cam, let's say one of my favorite cams, and here's your here's your key. I use a 223, 227, 600, 600, and on a 113 for five three trucks. I moved that configuration around, I don't know, 30 times over the last 10 years, and this is the absolute best as far as making horsepower and torque. And you'll notice when you go down the road in a truck you're gonna be doing about 1800 RPM at 60, 65, depends on gear ratio. So you've gotta make sure the camshaft works at least a little bit at that RPM. Otherwise, the thing just doesn't pull right and your fuel economy is a damn disaster. Um, it's just pretty darn, darn important. So the 223, 227, 600, 600, a 113, We'll end up making four and a quarter horse and 425 foot-pounds of torque. I like square motors because they tend to run and pull really good. Um, but once again, with a 5.3, you've got uh, 327 cubic inches. So you know that with 327 cubes, the best you can hope for, if you watched any of my other videos, one and a half horsepower per cube, which puts you at uh, 480, 500, which is just about perfect for that LS cylinder head. Now, can you make a little bit more with some port work and that type of thing? Sure, but for the most part, all you're doing is grasping at straws, trying to make things work that don't really want to mechanically go there. There's always a limiting factor in your engine, always. Whether it's cubic inches, intake manifold, exhaust manifold, throttle body, um, somewhere back in the muffler section where it's blocking, whatever it might be, there's always a limiting factor. But if you can get the camshaft set up so it's going to want to make one and a half horsepower per cube or close to it, and 1.3 to 1.4 foot pounds of torque, this is all at the crank, you got yourself a winner. The problem comes in when somebody puts a big camshaft in a truck, let's say a 236, 246, uh, it ends up running really poorly and gets crappy gas mileage and will not pull its way out of a wet paper bag, and people are very disappointed. So let's get you on the right step there. Same thing with the 4.8, the baby cam. I usually nick that down by two degrees. So instead of 223, I'm running a 221 and 225. The extra, cube, the extra cubic inches to the 5.3 helps the motor pull a little bit better. We'll actually work the cubic inches, uh, work the, the camshaft and the cylinder head better um, than the 4.8. But the 4.8 works just fine. So then you go to the 5.7, which is Corvette and 6.0. They got the LS1 configuration uh, cathedral ports. I use a bigger cam there because most of the time they're used for either a street strip application or a nasty street. I have done road race cams. So the one I always use in the 5.7 for guys with spirited driving skills is I'll use a 226 to 234, 600, 600, and I'll put it on a 112 lobe set. Now we're gonna go into lobe set here a little later on how it looks and how it works. But that camshaft works really good for people that want to be shifting up at about 6,500. It'll maximize cubic inches. It's a little fussy down low and gives you kind of a, a grumpy, grumpy idle. Um, but it's worked, it's proven to be a really, really good camshaft over time. It's still, you can work it with a stock converter without major issues. Um, likes to convert a little bit better, but not a big deal. When you get into something that's a bigger, um, say a 408 cubic inch, Ford and stroke, six liter. Um, the LS1 cylinder is really kind of restricting. I did one of these back in the early days of my own Corvette. We tried putting a big camshaft to it. We did, did get the thing to make 625 horse at the crank. The problem was it was so fussy down low, even with a stick, it was miserable to drive. Now it jacked the bear up the, the racetrack, but it was a bad cylinder head, even though we cleaned him up to work with, because the cylinder head was maxing out not the, not the cubic inches. We did make 1.5, we were hoping for better than that. So if you're gonna road race that type of stuff, that one did have a 242, 252 in it, six and a quarter, six and a quarter, and we put that on a 111. Um, don't recommend that one. That's, a, that's a, a bad, that was a kind of a bad choice. We ended up changing it out later on, but um, that will get you around the racetrack in a heck of a hurry, but it only works from about 
3,500 to 6,500 or 7,000. So be aware of that situation. Okay, now we're gonna get to the meat and potatoes and why that works. You've got all the cliff notes right there. If you wanna jump off the video, that's fine. If you wanna learn more, here we go. So your roller cam configuration, I'm gonna pull these up right here. This is your flat tap and cam. This is the old fashioned. See how that's pear shaped right there? Real pear shaped so the lobe comes up real soft and there's not a lot of, not a lot of duration up here at the very top where your valve is flowing a bunch. Here's a roller cam, and this is a stock roller cam. This is not even one of the nasty ones that's got the new lobes. See how this lobe is very aggressive going up? That's because you've got rollers right there. So you can take advantage of the roller lifter that you can't with a flat tap it. And the big thing is in this book from Comp, they've got roller lifters that are really, really aggressive. So you can have your take cake and eat it too. You can have a short duration cam, still fills the cylinder head and fills the cylinder to maximum and have a nice big fat torque curve with good idle characteristics and maximize out your cubic inches. That's what we usually shoot for here at high tech. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the part about lobe separation and what goes on. Lobe separation is simply put, it's the top of the lobe to the top of the lobe. Now, when you get bigger lobes, you end up with the lobe step, step stays the same, but your overlap comes more because the lobes are bigger. Now, when that happens, you get a poopy idle and things start to come, they get progressively worse for idle characteristics, but they work better up high. So when you're looking at the lobe step, so if you've got a cam, let's say that's for, for easy sake, 230, 230 degree, and put it on a 112, and then you've got a cam that's a 220, 220, and put it on the same 112, that thing is 10 degrees difference in overlap. I call it true overlap. And there's a website called Wallace Racing, and they've got a great camshaft uh, event calculator, and also it shows you what true overlap is. Now I've got six or seven pages, I'll put some of these up, of cams I've used and cams that I've looked at, and that's shows what the true overlap is. And usually for a truck, you wanna be true overlap between minus one and plus one. That works the best for trucks that are trying to pull anything. And for stuff that's spirited street, you wanna be anywhere in that three to five um, degrees of true overlap. The more overlap you have, the fussy the idle. So if you're looking for something that sounds like John Force idling in the pits, all you do is you end up increasing the overlap a little bit and the, the car becomes more aggressive sounding, but you're also losing cylinder pressure. The goal here is to trap the cylinder pressure that comes in from the intake manifold, light it off, make power, and then shoot it out the exhaust. It's a fine balancing act. And the LS1 cylinder head does a pretty good job up to about 500 horsepower, maybe 525. After that, it's pretty well defunct. That's where we're gonna get into the LS3. Uh, the LS2 cylinder head is, is Pretty much the same as an LS1 as far as numbers. Um, not a lot of difference there. So anybody doing an LS1, LS2, these camshafts will work for you. Now, there's always questions that come up with intake center line, advancing or retarding. And the guys that are doing camshafts that are really big and they'll do like a 236, 252 and put it on a 116 and then they'll advance it like six degrees. All they're trying to do is put the timing events back into play, have the thing sound like a box of rocks, um, which everybody thinks is sexy. And to me, it just sounds like you're kind of whizzing fuel away. And then they'll end up, it's, it's really not good for anybody, but that's what a lot of people do. You don't need to do that. So when you've got the cylinder head, the, the LS1, which you can refer back to the numbers, the LS1 cylinder head, flows 193 CFM on the exhaust side at 600. That's about 84%. So it doesn't need a bunch of extra exhaust to get, get the exhaust flow out of the way. Remember, you're trying to trap cylinder pressure at any given RPM to make power. The more cylinder pressure you can trap, the better off you're gonna be as far as making torque and then horsepower at the top, because horsepower is just a mathematical figure. It's torque times RPM divided by a constant, which is 5250, gives you horsepower. That's why every dyno graph you see better cross at 5250 or somebody's screwed with it. Just be aware of that little situation. And it's just a mathematical formula somebody came up with a long time ago. What it really means, I can't really 
tell you, it's just an ability to do work over a given time. So let's go over a couple things one more time. First thing is, take your vehicle out, go down the highway, see what you're doing at 60, 70 miles an hour. What RPM are you at? If things got gears or big tires, you're gonna have to change a camshaft to work better. A smaller camshaft, you've got big ass tires and a heavy vehicle, 5,000, 5,500, 6,000, whatever, Tahoe, Suburban, will work better with a smaller camshaft for everyday use and for an occasional run down the strip. Second thing is you've got to figure out what the what you're going to use the vehicle for. That's critical on that. So if you think you're going to go to the racetrack all the time, great. Tear the seats out, tear the radio out, take the plates off of it, take the AC off of it. Everything comes off of it. Well, if you're saying, well, I can't do that because i got to drive it to work, that's not a race car. So don't get a camshaft for a race car that you're not going to actually race. It won't work well and you'll be unhappy. Third thing is, don't try to make the cylinder heads do something they won't do. Back in my day with the old um, 202 Camelback heads, we had to use big camshafts because first of all, we had flat tappet cams. They were kind of crappy for the amount of uh, duration they could do at 200. And the cylinder heads didn't flow diddly. They flow like 180 CFM, 185 CFM, no matter what you did with those ports. They were crappy. So we had to use big cams trying to, trying to make sure we could band-aid a bad cylinder head. The better the cylinder head, the less camshaft you have to use to make the maximum power of the rest of the combination of the cubic inches. So a great cylinder head like the LS3 or the Hemi head we're going to talk about a little later is 100 CFM more all the way across on the intake. You don't have to use that big a camshaft to maximize the amount of cubic inches and the horsepower. You don't have to have something that runs crappy to make all the horsepower. All it does is run crappy. So then the question comes up when you're buying a camshaft, use a little thought process and go over what you're really going to be doing with the car and then talk about what you want to do and what you want the thing to sound like when you get done. You can change the overlap a little bit to get more rally, grumbly, rumbly idle, but don't get too carried away. That 223, 227 cam for a truck on a 112 makes all the noise that most people want. Uh, put it on a 113, it'll make a little bit more torque down low, but won't quite pull the 60, 62, 6300. But that's my number one go-to cam. 5.7 car, mostly came in production cars. You can work with a 2, 226, 228 on the intake side and go to a 234, 236 on the exhaust. Put that on a 113, go to Wallace Racing and look at what the overlap is. Decide what you want to do, listen to clips on, the, on your YouTube videos. If you have any questions, you can send me an email, bart at hightechmotorsport.com, and I'll converse with you. I do get 150 emails a day. I just want you to know that if you ask me if I'm sure about stuff, the answer is I wouldn't be telling you this if I wasn't sure about it. I've had a 1,000 cars on the chassis dyno with LS motors in a different configuration. I do these things every day. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sure about what I use. doesn't mean I'm 100% correct, but it means I've done a 1,000 of them. So it's probably more than the guy sitting next to you with a bag of Cheetos downstairs with his own computer going nuts. Remember, if you're ever in doubt, take the smaller of the two camshafts and that'll make you a little happier than taking the big camshaft. People always want to go bigger and better. So if it's really, bigger is always better, why don't you just do a 360, 360, 600, 600 and put it on a 104 and then the car won't run. See what I'm getting at here? It's all a matter of airflow and how the air wants to react with the number of cubic inches you've got and your application. So this is a little bit of a rambling video, but I want to make it as simple as possible and, get you, and give you guys what I use. And we'll talk about this a little bit later if we're going to recut a few spots here and hear what we're going to do. But be aware of people out there trying to sell you the wrong camshafts for their, you know, for their cash flow. Doesn't make it right, but that's what they're going to sell you. So be aware. Stage five cam in a truck is not a, nobody knows what a stage five is. That's the funny part. Even I don't call them things stage fives. Don't get it. Anyway, send me an email. You can always call me also, but I um, I do get over 100 phone calls a day. I try to get back to everybody if you leave me a message. 763-712-9088. This is Bart at High Tech Motorsport in Elk River, Minnesota. Have fun picking a cam.